The new Series 3 version of the Universal FR du Mont bronchoscope remains compatible with the previous series while bringing several improvements. Lighter than the previous versions, it comprises nine interchangeable graduated tubes, four short tracheal tubes without ventilation side ports, having external diameters ranging from 13.2 mm to 8 mm, with internal diameters 1 mm smaller. Five longer bronchial tubes with ventilation side ports. The external diameters range from 13.2 mm to 7 mm. All these tubes are round without internal asperities, allowing the bronchial tubes to easily slide in and out of the tracheal tubes. Each tube diameter is color coded. These tubes are attached to the bronchoscope universal base using the Medlock connection. The universal base has the following characteristics. Divided in two parts, the upper one is free to rotate over 360 degrees, while the lower part is fixedly connected to a tube by the medlock. Silicone caps are attached to both axial and lateral ports, allowing obturation with one or two holes. Different entry ports are available. Situated on the lower part of the base, an oblique lateral port with two openings, one for a laser fiber and the other for a suction catheter. The lateral obturator is removable to allow extraction of large fragments using a suction catheter. The laser fiber can be replaced by a thermocoagulator or an argon plasma coagulation probe. It is important that all instrumentation is free to move in the bronchoscope tube and that it can be moved independently. The upper part of the base comprises two ventilation ports. One is used for spontaneous assisted ventilation and the other for jet ventilation. The axial port can be obturated using a silicone cap with either one or two holes one for an optical or flexible endoscope, and the other for an ancillary product, such as forceps. The universal base inside surface is completely smooth and without any protuberance where the jet ventilation port is. The modular design permits medlock connection to a large diameter tracheal tube. Fitted with a silicone cap, different diameter bronchial tubes can be inserted through the connection. This design allows to intubate the patient once with a large yellow tracheal tube and then to use different bronchial tubes without extubating or reintubating the patient. Various instruments can be inserted through the bronchoscope, such as forceps used for biopsies, foreign body retrieval, or scissors. Optical forceps are also available. The fact that the bronchoscope is round and completely smooth allows to easily insert a large diameter stent introducer. Each main tracheobronchial tube has its corresponding stent introducer quickly identified by same color coding. To avoid harming the bronchial tree, the stent introducer cannot protrude out of its corresponding tube's distal tip. For stent insertion in the introducer tube, two types of loaders are available for the different stents. FAIR has developed a line of patented silicone stents known as FAIR Superglass. Straight tracheal and bronchial stents of various diameter and lengths are available. Stent packaging has the same color code relating to diameter as the tracheal and bronchial tubes. For lesions located on the carina, various sized Y stents are available. Stents can be supplied either in transparent or radio-opaque silicone. They are covered with a biocompatible hydrophobic coating. They are designed to be flexible enough to adapt to the tracheobronchial tree and its dynamics, which are breathing and coughing movements. 
Contrary to metal stents, these silicone stents have shape memory and secondary compressions do not occur. Metal stents are subjected to deformations, which can lead to their fracture with a dramatic risk of vascular perforation. Compressions leading to deformations of the stent are not rare. Another weak point is their extensibility, which can cause migration or even anchoring of the ends into the mucosa with granulomatous inflammation. Stent diameter choice is done using size of tube in the abstraction. Stent length is determined by pulling the optical endoscope from the lower to the upper part of the stenosis. A telescopic loader can be used for either tracheal or bronchial stents of short lengths. Silicone spray is applied to the instrumentation. The stent is folded over itself and placed in the large part of the loader. By a piston effect, the stent is pushed into the corresponding introducer tube. For short Y stents, the same type of loader can be used in the same manner as for straight stents. The stent will then be pushed out as follows. After a large dilatation, the bronchoscope tip is positioned below the narrowed area. The stent is then pushed out while progressively withdrawing the bronchoscope. This operation can be carried out under endoscopic viewing. The stent pusher tube is hollow, allowing insertion of an optical endoscope. For long, straight or Y stents, Another more sophisticated type of loader can be used. Make sure the orientation of the Y stent is respected. Fold the stent over itself and slide it into the loader. Place and lock cover on the loader by pushing it forward. The orientation of the Y stent is indicated on both instruments. Lubricate abundantly the introducer tube. The stent is compressed and pushed into the corresponding introducer by a double pushing action. The stent is correctly positioned in the introducer tube. The stent is placed in the trachea as follows. Both branches are placed at the start of the main left bronchus. The stent is progressively pulled until the right branch is positioned correctly. In conclusion, this bronchoscope system has universal vocation. Its modularity allows for all types of interventions. All applications of rigid bronchoscopy, biopsies, cutting, foreign body removal, and especially endoscopic resections with or without laser or argon plasma, endoscopic dilatations using different tubes with adapted diameters, placement of tracheal or bronchial stents and Y stents. All these operations can be monitored using the EVS 900 which incorporates screen, light source, camera 
and allows recording of images and video sequences.